Welcome back to the Simple Farmhouse Life podcast. I'm still trying to decide if I have the camera going. I'm trying to decide if I'm gonna actually post it to YouTube this way. If it really adds any more value than just posting the audio with a picture, which is what I've been doing on my Simple Farmhouse Life YouTube channel to make videos in correspondence with all of my podcasts. And I don't know, I feel like it's, I'm already making this video. I might as well do it like this, but then again, at the same time, who really needs to watch me talk? This episode of the Simple Farmhouse Life podcast is sponsored by my brand new Blogging Success Masterclass. This is a free masterclass where I share with you what I know about building a successful blog. You can find that at bit.ly forward slash farmhouse blogging school. My name is Lisa, mom of six and creator of the blog and YouTube channel, Farmhouse on Boone. Join me as I share with you my love for creating a handmade home from scratch cooking and a little mom and entrepreneur life along the way. For today's podcast episode, I'm going to do a Q and A that my VA, so I have a virtual assistant who helps me in so many ways. She helps me edit all of my videos. She does so many things. She's been with me for five years now, or almost five years, I think, this summer. So she has put together, this was completely her idea, to put together all of the most frequently asked questions that she feels like when she helps me get into comments and DMs, the same questions that we get over and over and over again. So that way she could refer you or whoever asks to this video, to this podcast. So I'm just going to go through those and answer some of the most frequently asked questions that I get here on my podcast, blog, Instagram, and YouTube channel. Okay, the first one is, do your kids eat snacks? And if so, what kind of snacks? So I am not one of those super organized moms. You probably, if you follow me already, you probably know this about me, but I'm not the mom that when you get to the park has a bag full of prepackaged, you know, snacks. And I'm lucky if I have water and socks on the kids, to be honest with you. So this isn't such an organized thing, but in a way, if I really think about it, yes, they do kind of. So for example, this morning I made bagels for breakfast they were done a little bit later than breakfast because they take a while. So those were sitting on the counter all throughout the day, several bagels, and kids definitely grabbed them. I also was making a video for YouTube today where I was sharing five different of my favorite fast food meals, so basically meals that you can make in a pinch, and I wanted to shoot it all in one day. Instead of doing like a what we eat in a week style, I just wanted to get it done today. And so there was just food out all day long and I constantly had kids in here picking at the food. There was pancakes, there was quiche, there was salmon patties. And I would say that's probably how it is most of the time. So when I hear, do your kids snack? I'm usually like, no, we don't snack. And then I'm thinking about it. And the reason I say that is I'm, I realize that we don't have like fruit leather strips or just any of the common snacking foods like packs of yogurt or things like that. But there is this, open door to the kitchen that is almost always, there's almost always being food made in there just constantly. So um, they do grab food throughout the day, but in the conventional sense, we don't really do snacks. Now, I will say that a couple of my kids constantly grab carrots from the fridge, cheese, dried fruit. So anytime we have raisins or dried cherries, they never last because kids will take those. They sometimes get into my chocolate stash things like that. I have occasionally bought Jovial's Einkorn crackers, but I bought those like two or three times because again, they just don't last. Anytime we have a real snack, the kids just devour them and so it's just almost not even worth keeping on hand. And we do prefer them not to snack so they'll eat at meals, but there is a lot of grazing going on in our house. How, okay, this is when I get a lot. How do you get everything done and when do you rest? I have said this before, but I do want to put all of these FAQs right here in this particular podcast episode, so you've probably heard this, but I have so much help. I was just talking about my VA. I have several people that work on my blog, but I don't have any that many regular, so I'm trying to think of how many I have that regularly work on my blog. I would say six people that regularly touch my blog business, whether that is helping to write posts, answer comments, 
edit the videos. I even have someone that occasionally helps me with photography and recipe development. And then I hire out things that are just more on like an a la carte basis. So for example, I get on Fiverr all the time and I'll draw up a pattern for a sewing project and then I'll have them turn that pattern into a printable pattern for you all on my blog. And then I'll hire someone right now, I'm trying to switch my website over to a different design or a home page, or work on site speed issues or just behind the scenes things. I just have a lot of help. And then also I have my husband home. So for three years this coming May, my husband has been home from his job to help with homeschool, the house, the business. We tag team everything. And it, it's been far enough removed now, three years, that I almost sometimes forget just how much that helps. So he'll occasionally, let's say he, like today, he took the two girls to their violin and guitar lessons. And so I'm home with the three little ones. He also took the third child. So he had the three oldest, I had the three youngest. And I can get stuff done with kids around, but Outside of nap times, it's pretty dang hard, and I forget just how hard that is. So I had my five, three, and one-year-old home with me, and I was making a recipe, I had the camera out, and then I'd run outside and see where everybody is, run back in because Daniel run, ran out of the kitchen, and it's just this constant back and forth. And so my tips for when you don't have help, because I am occasionally in that, you know, just here and there, times when Luke's not home or whatever, that I remember how it works when you have a bunch of kids around and no one to take them. So like right now, he's outside with the kids. I mean, it's the evening, so I think most people's husbands would be home at this time as well. But times that are just during the day, kids are all awake, I just really utilize those nap times. So when I was building my blog for the first three years before, actually, Two and a half years is what it took me to get my blog up and running enough to get Luke home from his job. So those first two and a half years, I had four and then five kids and no help, and obviously I was blogging pretty seriously because it was able to replace our income. I just had to use those nap times. So I would wake up in the morning before the kids got up, or at least before all of them got up. There was always somebody up with me. Do a little bit of work then, so about an hour in the morning, two hours at afternoon nap, and yes, I did have older kids who didn't nap, but it's just been a thing since day one, not really day one, day like six months <laughs> with my kids, that there's an afternoon nap and it's just like a quiet time. Up until the six month mark, I just put the baby in the Moby wrap and go on as if they're at nap. And during those time stretches, when before Luke was home, so now I definitely like don't quite do this anymore, but I would not clean the kitchen, I would not do laundry, I would do nothing else except what was on my list for my blog for that day. So the thing too is if you're trying to build something, like whether it be a blog or any kind of business, maybe you're selling on Etsy or something, you likely, when you sit down at your computer, let's say you have a moment, like you just got the kids down for a nap, and you might think of a thousand different things you can do because there's always a million different things that you can do but you have to have a detailed list of what you wanna accomplish for each day, and I still run this way, so that when you do sit down, you know exactly what to attack and there's no dilly-dallying around. Another thing you'll be tempted to do is get the kids down for a nap and then clean the disaster of the kitchen that just happened from lunch in the morning. And I found that I can do that kind of work when the kids are awake. They can help me, we can, you know, I can shut the gate to the kitchen trap my ones that have to be watched, so the younger ones, in here, and I can attack cleaning even if it's loud and crazy, but I can't record a podcast. So I had to really prioritize when I could do certain things and just letting the rest of the things go, knowing that I would just get to it later. And then I also utilized the two after bedtime hours. So I had one in the morning, two in the afternoon, and then two from about seven to nine, so early bedtime if you can do that. With the younger kids, older kids, you know, they can be awake and you can still work on stuff. So with that, I still had about five hours every single day to devote to my business and it was plenty of time to move the needle. And still to this day, I don't get any more than that. In fact, I actually get less than that because we just have so much going on and that's how I wanted to build my business. 
And so uh, I still only have these little sections throughout the day, but I think it's more about how I organize my day and how whenever I sit down to do that, I don't do other things that are, are good causes like laundry and dishes and all that, that has to be done. But during those time slots, I didn't do it. So every day or every week at the beginning of the week, I write in my notes app, it's not fancy. I just literally get out my notes app. I have an ongoing list that I just update every week. And it says Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We don't usually do any business work, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And I'll just write the tasks that have to happen that day. So that way, whenever I get a little bit of time, like right now, I didn't really know I was getting this time, but he's outside with the kids, so I'm taking it. I have written down for tomorrow's list to record a podcast, but I decided, you know, why not get ahead of that and start working on that right now? And so I shift things around between the lists, but I know what I need to get done from Monday to Thursday to make this week happen. I can't really think about next week because it's just too much, but I know what has to happen to get out my two videos, my two blog posts for this week and who I need to talk to and organize and manage. I just have like a whole list of tasks. Okay, that was a long answer, but the key is to, if you do want, if there is something you want to do, you probably do have time to do it. Things just might need to be shuffled around and prioritized. Even if it's not a business, it might just be like, I wanna learn how to do sourdough, but I feel like I never have any time. You probably have more time than you think if you really think about those structured parts of the day where you might be doing other things. Oh, and when do I rest? I mean, nowadays, I don't really work past seven. I mean, I, I really don't usually even work right now. I just, they're outside and I already have dinner done because it was part of my blog today or my vlog. And so dinner's done. And so I have this time, but usually once like three rolls around, I don't really work anymore. So I have like the same rest time that everyone else has, you know, evening, bedtime, all that. And then also with Luke being home, he does, he's the one who wakes up early with the kids. It was me for all those years before that, and now it's him, and I love it, it's my favorite thing. And he likes the quiet in the morning, so he actually wants to do it, so it's just like the best case scenario for me. Okay, where is your apron from? I don't know what question that's referring to, or what apron that question's referring to. Currently I'm wearing this apron, because I always am wearing an apron at all times. Um, if you're on the podcast and not the video, it's the blue and white half apron, the tutorials on my blog, I have a full apron tutorial on my blog. Um, some of my aprons came from World Market, but most of them are handmade. Do I have to keep throwing away sourdough starter day after day? These are in no order. These are like totally random. So no, and I get this one all the time. After the sourdough starter is established, there's no more discarding. You just feed it as much flour and water as you want, use as much as you want, just always make sure to leave a little bit and then add more flour and water, but no more discarding after it's established. So I made my starter 10 years ago and I don't discard ever. If I have too much, like let's say I've just been feeding it, not using it, I'll make something like pizza crust, pancakes. Those are the probably the highest sourdough starter way to use or the high, like the most starter to use it up quickly. Or crepes, that's another good one. What homeschooling curriculum do you use? Why do you homeschool? That's a loaded question. <laughs> the other night uh, when Luke and I did our Q&A, so I had my husband on to do a Q&A, and we did answer that question, but I also deleted it because, I don't know. I hate being, I hate being controversial. With my personal friend group, family, we can just chat, 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 and I feel totally comfortable airing all of my opinions. But in this particular platform, I find that uncomfortable. So I can refer you to a few books, a few podcasts if you're interested in digging, but as Christians, I definitely uh, love homeschooling. I love the calling of homeschooling, and should it ever, be taken away from me, that would that would be like, I mean, that is, that is like the core of our goals as a family. So um, let me think of some of the books that we've read. Let me refer you, I've already referred you before, but to the Ali Stuckey podcast, she does a lot of information on the education system. So if you wanna dig there a little bit, and then I'm trying to think of, it's been so long since we've made this decision. We made it whenever our daughter was a baby. Now, Seth Godin, he is not 
a Christian. He's a secular person, but he has some good information on education. There's Susan Schaefer Macaulay. That was a good, uh, we read For the Children's Sake, so Foundation of Education for Home and School. We read that many years ago. Okay, so many more. I'm just gonna stop there though. You can dig if you want to. Um, as far as curriculums, we don't use a curriculum. We've tried it before. Actually, we've tried it multiple times and it is just not us. So we piece it together. We do study uh, like math. We do an online thing. My three oldest kids all go by grade level on that. So that's one area that we do have a curriculum, but Luke puts together these reading lists and history lessons. Uh, we do use a curriculum for science. We use Rod and Staff. So it's not one out of the box. We just use different things for each subject. And we probably spend about three hours a day on focused school. And then we do things throughout the day. So my kids do music lessons. There's lots of outside time. My, they each have different interests. So my oldest is really into sewing. My second is really into cooking and baking. My third is into robotics. That's his thing, which he's not at the age where he can really do much. But one thing I really try to do is always have everything they need. So if they need something for like my oldest sewing, okay, I bought her a sewing machine like four years ago. Well, it just died recently. It was a cheap machine. And we right away went and got her another one because to me, having those supplies is what allows them to explore their interests and to keep, continue to learn and grow. So she's at the stage now where she can make things that she can actually wear. And so I wanna keep feeding that. So I buy her fabric, I buy her sewing machines. And you know, it, it can get expensive, but at the same time, I think about what a private school would cost. And so I want to always be able to invest for that. Okay, what does your husband do? Do you work together? So I already talked about that. He is home with me. He helps with lots of like any project we need to do for the blog, like I'm looking out here, I see our slate tile, uh, hearth pad, our foam handle project, our picket fence, painting, everywhere I look, there's something that my husband did. And then also, like I mentioned, he really takes control now of educating the kids. So that used to be my thing, and so I had to do that alongside of the blog and everything else, and now that is something that he does. So usually, each day can look different, but I would say most days, he takes the three oldest to do school, whether it's on the front porch, upstairs, in the dining room. I'll take the three youngest, and I might like make a meal video or something like that where it's silent in my videos. I had somebody today say, how do you make this food and do all of this? I always have a screaming toddler, and I told her, that's why the videos are silent, <laughs> because whenever I'm in here and I'm just cooking and there's this pretty music, most likely it is not that peaceful behind the camera because I'll have several little kids here in the kitchen. They're just running around and I'm cooking, but the camera's not showing that. So a lot of times that's why I'm, I make those silent kind of videos because it's easy for me to do while I'm helping, you know, if I have half the kids while he's educating the older ones and we just will split things like that. So it's hard to say like what he does, what I do. It's always just like a moving thing that we got used to in the beginning of him coming home and we just, we know what we're doing now with three years of doing this together. What kind of dog do you have? We have a Great Pyrenees mixed with Anatolian Shepherd. He's a massive dog, very good dog and good with our animals. We got him sort of for like a livestock guard dog. How do you budget expenses? I talked more about this in the podcast q with my husband, but the short answer is we don't. I think just because we're pretty naturally frugal we don't really we don't really budget. We always just don't buy something unless we have the money and the less you can spend the better is kind of our strategy. It's always worked out for us. How did you get into blogging and how do I get into blogging? So I got into blogging a little over five years ago just because I loved being creative. I love sewing. You know all the things I love to do if you follow my blog and I saw that people were turning it into a business and so I was determined to figure that out and at first I had no clue what I was doing. It took me a good year to even figure out remotely how you should do a blog because what you see with a blog is only the tip of the iceberg of what goes on behind it to make it successful. So it took me 
at least a year and a half to even figure that out. So how do you get into blogging? I recommend starting with WordPress. That's very important. I have people all the time want to start on Squarespace, Wix. You have to start on WordPress, okay? Uh, more explanation on that if you are interested in my blogging success masterclass. So if you go to bit.ly forward slash farmhouse blogging school, there is all that information on why it has to be WordPress, so many more things, but you need to start on WordPress. Ugh, it's a loaded question. How do you start blogging? That's where you start. And then there is just so much more to learn. So that's <laughs> where you start. And if you're interested enough and you're motivated enough, you will eventually learn it. It just will be over time. So I do have a blogging course. I talk more about that also in my free uh, masterclass. So if you are interested in learning how to start a blog, I did put into a course over 60 lessons of everything that I learned in that first year to help you skip ahead of that. Can you substitute sugar for honey? Can you substitute wheat for white flour? How can I make your recipes egg free? Um, Okay, so she, thank you so much to my dear VA because she suggested the answer for me. She, she put all that, then she said, uh, here I'd explain you test recipes with specific ingredients. Trust me when I say we do get that all the time. So people will say, can I substitute this for wheat, add honey instead of sugar? And I'm like, by now it's a whole different recipe. So I have no idea. I tested how I tested it. I would just try it because most likely, yes, it might turn out like slightly different than I showed it, but it will still turn out good. But that's me. I'm not a person to be overly specific. It's just, it's food. It'll, it'll be good regardless. How do you stay calm all the time? Again, like I said before, I don't show everything. I'm actually sort of a private person. And I know that you wouldn't think that with all that I do. But if you notice, I don't talk about like personal things. I don't show everything. I just give you like a little glimpse into this curated part of my life. And so how do I stay calm? I'm not always calm. I mean, I'm not, no, I'm not always calm. <laughs> so things can definitely stress me out. My kids can stress me out. The amount of projects we have can overwhelm me. I know how to, I can do better. And that typically just involves a list and focusing on not more than what I'm doing right now and not the mountain I'm climbing with just the next couple steps. And I can feel when I'm moving outside of that and it does happen. And usually it's just because I start thinking about 15 things to do instead of just what's right ahead of me. And so I can typically stay pretty calm in that, but there are times when I spiral into thinking of way more than one person should at one time. And I'm sure we've all done that. How do you take care of six kids? Isn't it stressful? How do you afford six kids? Um, you just do what you have to do. You know, I guarantee that anybody who, if you have three and then suddenly you had triplets and you have six kids, you'd figure it out. It's just one of those things where you will rise to that occasion. And also we had our kids one at a time, no twins, no triplets. And so it's just built up over time. We've built our skills, which, it is learning how to take care of kids is just a skill you build over time our older kids are very helpful now because they're older and then how do we afford six kids you just do and i think that kids can be as expensive or not as expensive as you want them to be i mean there are definitely things that cost that you can't really avoid but there are things that you can totally avoid if you need to and i know i know people who have double the kids I have on lower income. So it's totally possible. Why do you drink raw milk? I did a whole episode on this. So let's see here, what episode is it? Actually, go to farmhouseonboon.com, search raw milk. I left the post there. I took it off of my YouTube channel because I was afraid of just, you know, I didn't want to be flagged or for misinformation or anything like that because drinking raw milk is an individual decision that you have to be comfortable with. I'm comfortable with it. We've been drinking it for 10 years. I've drank it through all my pregnancies except for the first one, maybe two. And I'm perfectly comfortable with it. It is alive, all of the good bacteria that helps you to digest milk is alive and well. It's killed off in pasteurization. It makes the most beautiful kefir. 
I don't have any trouble digesting milk. Nobody in my family does. Whereas I know whenever milk is all the good stuff in it is killed. There's a lot more information on this that if you start digging, you will find. Start with my blog post. I mean, we would never not drink raw milk. I get asked that all the time if I boil the milk from the goats or pasteurize it. No, that's why I, that is why I milk goats. That is why I go out of my way to find farms. I don't get milk from the store is to get that raw milk. Where did you learn to sew? That's just been over time. Taught myself to sew. I've been practicing that for 12 years now. Where do you get the music for your videos? I get that off of Epidemic Sound. Do you guys ever eat out? Yes, um, Luke and I eat out approximately once a week because we go on a weekly date night and so we eat out then. And then we eat out with the family, I'd say once a month on average. Um, what's the big silver thing on the counter? That's our Berkey water filter. I talk about that a ton on the blog. So if you're in the market for clean water, check out, just go to farmhouseonmoon.com, search Berkey. There's a review, there's a setup. I have like tons of Berkey info. How do you heat up food? We just heat it up in a cast iron skillet. We, we don't have a microwave and so we just put it in the cast iron skillet. If it's something that, like, let's see, some things, can't be heated in the skillet. Like let's say leftover pizza. We'll just put it into the cast iron skillet and then put it in the oven versus heating it on the stove top. But we don't have an issue with that at all. And we do eat leftovers. We eat leftovers anytime we have them. Even if it's a really small amount, I'll just put it in the fridge. And then we do one big leftover feast where we just get out all the random little things we have and eat that for dinner. Because less cooking for me and then I also just hate wasting food. Okay. She put a lot of them in this one. Do you have a recipe for sauerkraut? Yes, search on Farmhouse on Boone. Do you have a recipe for bread? Oh man, I have so many recipes. Uh, she put, do you have a recipe for dot, dot, dot? Because we get asked that a lot. And she said, thank you, Kaylee, for these answers. I actually really love it. Here I'd explain that they can look up the recipes much quicker if they type it in the search bar, look at the top of the page. So the thing is, is I think a lot of times people don't realize I have people on YouTube who don't realize I have a blog. I have people on Instagram who don't realize I have a blog or YouTube. And so they're just knowing me in these different places. And a lot of times creators on Instagram will put the recipe right there on Instagram on a story highlight. And so I think a lot of times they're just wanting to find it or wanting you to help them find it. But for, for me as a blogger, you can just go to farmhouseonmoon.com. There's a search bar at the top. And if I have a recipe, it'll you can easily find it there. Or if you go on DuckDuckGo or Google, you can just search Farmhouse on Boone sauerkraut, Farmhouse on Boone bread. And I actually have several bread recipes. I have a rye sourdough. I have an artisan sourdough, a whole wheat sourdough. I have an einkorn sandwich bread, but they will be all listed there. And people who know me on my podcast, a lot of times don't know I have a blog. And I actually, I'm like this too with people. So I just, I understand where you're coming from because I have people that I follow their podcasts that I didn't know they had a blog. I didn't know they had a YouTube channel. I didn't know they were in all of these places because I know them there. And so that's like my hub. If you ever, you know, for whatever reason, end up getting off of Instagram or Facebook or YouTube or even podcasts, everything can be found on my website. The podcast, the videos, the recipes, the pictures, it's all there. So that's where you can search it. Okay, I think that's all she has for me. Maybe we'll do another frequently asked questions part two if we end up getting a lot more of the same. Again, if you have not yet checked out my free blogging success masterclass, make sure to grab it. I teach you how to start a blog, how you can build it up and make it profitable. Get that at bit.ly forward slash farmhouse blogging school. As always, thank you so much for listening to the Simple Farmhouse Life podcast, and I will see you in the next episode. Thank you.